Hey everybody, welcome into my studio. Hope you're having a good day. I am excited today because it's time to start a new big project and I'm always excited when I'm getting ready to start a new big project. Uh, this time I'm gonna build a printer and you might be wondering, I've got like two of them right here behind me, why would I need to build another printer? I have a very special use case in mind for this very specific small printer that we're gonna build and we'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to talk about, first of all, the two printers behind me and what I currently use them for so that you can get an idea of kind of what I'm thinking with this new project. So this one here is my Voron 2.4. It's kind of my workhorse. It's the main printer that I've used for actually printing a lot of stuff you can see around me in the shot. This entire display wall over here, some uh, filament storage back behind me, all of that kind of stuff. I use it for printing big parts and mounting devices and containers and stuff like that. Not just for here in the studio, but a lot of places around my house. And uh, it's been great for that, right? It's, it's, it's really a workhorse. Now, I built this one a while back, sometime last year, maybe the year before, uh, from an LDO kit. And uh, it was a good build experience. Uh, it's, it's been a solid printer. I actually tore the whole thing down earlier this year and rebuilt it with a bunch of modifications and such. Um, and actually at this point, I should probably issue an official public apology on the YouTube channel. There was a series about that rebuild. And after like a couple of episodes, it just stopped. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you might've noticed that. Um, the problem there is entirely my fault. I actually lost all of that footage on my archive media drive by accident. And so there's no way that I can finish that build series. I, I apologize for that. If you were watching and waiting for more episodes in that series, they're not gonna come out. However, if you're interested, let me know. I could go, I could like talk through the changes that I made and kind of do a retrospective. I don't have the footage to show you the actual build, but I could do that. So drop a comment down below or on one of those other videos in that series if you're interested in me kind of wrapping up the series with an after the build retrospective showing how it finally turned out. Um, but yeah, I've been super happy with it. The other printer, which is over here, is my resin printer. It's a Uniformation GK2. Um, I replaced an older, much cheaper resin, resin printer that wasn't so good uh, last year sometime with this one, and I've been pretty happy. It doesn't, doesn't have a lot of failed prints. Uh, usually it's my fault with you know not supporting things correctly or um, just not dialing in the, the resin settings correctly. But when I do those things correctly, it prints really well. And what I tend to use that one for is for printing small detailed parts. So like this Gundam Penelope here that uh, is a custom that I built has a few little fins up here on the front. I shouldn't have probably picked this one as my example to show you guys because it's kind of hard to pick up and move around, but these little fins up here on the Phoenix head that's up here and a few other little vent details and other places around the kit are custom parts that I designed to fit either to replace existing parts or to supplement existing parts in the model kit. And uh, I print those things on the resin printer. So those are very small scale with lots of detail. Um, I know a lot of people use resin printers for printing like miniatures and things like that. That's not a hobby that I'm into or probably ever will be. And so that's not that interesting to me. But for very small, uh, you know, add on parts for model kits, that's typically what I use that resin printer for. I have used it to print some slightly larger things like this bust here. Um, and that's kind of leading into the idea that I have for this new printer. So like, here's a piece from this bust, right? It's bigger and chunkier than the, the small pr uh, parts that I normally print with resin. Uh, it still definitely has some detail in it. And printing something like this with a filament printer is, you know, maybe possible, but also you're gonna have to dial in your settings just perfectly to get a level of detail, at least for me, that I'm pleased with. And here's an example of that, right? I tried to print, this is like a torso of a mecha figurine. Uh, I tried to print this on the big Voron back here. And uh, you probably can't see on the detail on the camera, but there's some layer lines. Uh, it's not terrible. The details came out okay. Down here where supports were at the bottom of the print, uh, it's, it's pretty messy and not great. Um, but this is the type of part that I would like to see if it's possible to print with filament, uh, with a filament printer. And what I've decided is rather than trying to dial in settings on the big Voron, uh, because it's got such a big moving gantry and precision's gonna be tough, um, I wanted to see if I can build a filament printer that can print with a lot of precision. And so what I've decided to do is instead of having the biggest Voron printer, or in addition, I guess, to having the biggest Voron printer possible, I'm gonna build the smallest Voron printer possible as well, and I'm gonna use that to print detail parts like this. 
So what I've done is I've gone out and gotten an LDO kit again because I enjoyed the LDO build experience with this kit um, for a Voron V0. It's a V0.2, um, their latest version of that kit. And just for comparison, this is the build plate. It's 120 millimeters squared um, for the, the new Voron V0. Uh, over here, I've got the build plate for the big Voron behind me, right? So uh, you could almost fit three of these by three of these as like a nine square grid inside of this big, big build plate. Um, it's quite a lot smaller, but it's the perfect size for printing this kind of a part, right? One off, one at a time. Um, and so what we're gonna do in this series is we're gonna build this kit stock um, as it comes from LDO. And then after that, we'll tune it up and we'll do some test prints. And then I'll probably be swapping out some parts and components to try to add to the precision. So we're not going for speed with this build. I know a lot of people build small Voron printers and they're trying to print fast. Um, I'm going for precision. So I'm gonna try to build this thing up, uh, like I said, as, a stock, as the stock kit comes. And then we'll go through the process of fine tuning and maybe making some modifications and adjusting it to try to get the most precise parts of this style that I can get out of a printer that's this size. So with that said, uh, let's jump over to the build desk and I'll go over kind of the, the basics, the documentation that comes both with the Voron printers and also with the LDO kit, give you kind of an overview if you're, if you're gonna also build one of these kind of kits of the types of things that you're gonna wanna prepare for ahead of time before we start the build and then we'll get started with the build process. All right, so before we just dive into building, I think it's good to have a plan. So I'm gonna go over what my plan is for preparing everything that we're gonna to need to make the build go as smoothly as possible. If you've never built one of these Voron kits before, this is probably good information for you as well. On the right-hand side of my screen here, I've got the official Voron design assembly manual for the kit we're building, the V0. Now, if you're building a stock one from maybe parts you've self-sourced, you would just go through this manual in order and build everything here and you'd be done. Um, and then these manuals are really, really good, by the way. They have tons of pictures and renderings and little call outs to let you know what to be careful about and lots of good detail, but also easy to follow at the same time. So they're really, really well written. Uh, kudos to the Voron team for having such great documentation. However, if you're building a Voron from a kit, in this case, our kit came from LDO, Typically, those kits have some deviations from the manual, from the official documentation, because they've added some mods or some other changes into the kit. And so it's important to know that your kit probably also has its own documentation. And over here on the left-hand side of my screen, I have the official LDO documentation page. I will link this down in the description so that you can find it. You can also just search for like LDO Voron documentation, and you'll find it that way as well. And what you wanna do is make sure that you've picked the correct kit that you're building. So ours is the Voron 0.2. And then many times there are different revisions of the kits. And so we wanna look at the build notes for the R1 version of the kit because that's the version that I've ordered. And what you'll see here is that they list deltas from the official documentation. And so the idea is you go through the main manual here and then like when we get to page 12, we're gonna skip that because they've already done some work for us pre-drilling the extrusions. Um, and a lot of these instructions are very simple things like that, just to let you know to skip things or to do one thing slightly differently, maybe add an extra little uh, drop-in nut in a certain place in an extrusion because you're gonna need it later or something like that. However, every once in a while you get to a big change like this one here, which says we're gonna skip 10 pages of the official document. And instead we're gonna click on this link here to go and look at this guide, which shows us how to put together the Kirigami bed, which is a modification that comes with this version of the LDO kit. So as you're going through the official doc and you know building things, it's important to always have this up as well so that you don't miss one of the changes that you're supposed to make, right? Because then later on you might notice that something's not fitting or not right, or you don't have a part you think you need. And then you'll go come back here and realize, oh, I shouldn't have done something that I did and I have to go and undo a bunch of work. So yeah, you have to always be cross-referencing between these two documents to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Also, printed parts. So LDO provides their own printed parts guide as well because there are changes from the stock Voron printed parts that you need to probably make 
to accommodate the different modifications that they've included with the kit as well. And so these instructions, if you read through them carefully, say, you know, if you're printing your own parts, skip certain parts and do these other ones instead. However, they provided this little shortcut for us that I'll show you, which is the way that I've done things. If you go to the, um, in the Voron manual itself over here, they have this nice uh, list of files, STLs, uh, that you need to print that's like a checklist. And so this is my copy of that checklist. And what I started to do was to go through this official Voron checklist and then like black out parts I didn't need, like these here, for example, I just grayed out the background because I was like, oh, this one doesn't need to be printed. And then down at the bottom of this list, I was starting to add the ones off of the LDO document here that are additional things that I needed to print. I was gonna then use that checklist to figure out as I printed everything out. However, what I realized as I was looking through that is the these STLs that they link to here are on uh, LDO's GitHub. And over on LDO's GitHub, in addition to the raw STLs, they actually have this folder of preset print plates. And again, I'll link this down in the description if you're interested in grabbing these for yourself. These are 3MF files that you can just load into your slicer that have entire plates of parts. And the theory, at least, is that this is all of the stock Voron parts plus the LDO modifications. And if you print all of these plates of parts, you should have everything you need. And so what I've done is I loaded all those into my slicer of choice, which is Orca Slicer, and here they all are, right? And I went through them one at a time and printed each one of these plates. And so I have my pile of parts ready to go, which is basically the result of printing all of these. And I haven't yet checked to make sure that that is everything that I need, but I'm going to do that in the next step. So let's talk about how that process is gonna work. I've got here, on my desk, the printed parts, right? And this bucket is everything that came off of those, those plates. And so what I'm gonna do out of an abundance of caution, I guess, and maybe this is crazy and too much uh, time spent prepping, um, but I'm, I wanna be very careful because I wanna make sure that the final thing that we end up building is as precise as possible. Remember, we're going for precision with this printer build, and so I don't wanna be undoing or having to loosen and retighten things or you know take things apart and put things back together. So I wanna make sure everything is perfect from the, from the initial build. And so in order to do that, what I've decided to do is I'm gonna go through the Voron manual that I was just showing you on my screen and the LDO build, build notes guide, have those up on my screen, and go through all the steps, but not actually do the assembly, just prep all the parts. And so for each step, I'm gonna pull out the parts that are needed from here. I'm gonna pull out the hardware that's needed for that part of the build from the Voron kit. And I'm going to set all of that aside into little bins like this um, for each main section of the assembly so that I know I have everything that I need and so that I've kind of dry fit everything to make sure that it's all gonna work. The other thing that I'm going to do during that uh, sort of pre-installation uh, setup process is I'm going to go ahead and put all of the heat set inserts into all the plastic parts that need them. So if you're unfamiliar with a standard Voron printer build, any time that metal has to screw into plastic, well, almost every time that metal has to screw into plastic, they ask you to put one of these heat set inserts in. And the way this works is you just put this into the uh, opening that already exists in the printed part. Then you get your soldering iron with a special tool and you insert that down into the opening there. The special tool actually comes with the LDO kit, so if you don't have one of these, you put this in the end of your soldering iron, you insert this right down into the tip there, it heats up that brass insert, and then you press it down, it sort of melts into the plastic. Again, you don't wanna have this too hot, just hot enough to soften the plastic, and you wanna press that down until it's flush with the plastic surface. And so, Rather than doing these in little batches as we go to each section of the instructions as we're doing our build, I'm just gonna pre-do all of these heat set inserts. I'm not gonna show that on video. There are plenty of other resources on YouTube if you're curious about seeing that process in action. Um, other people have done Voron builds and included that in, in their videos. So I'm gonna skip that part. The next time you see all of these printed parts, they'll already have the heat set inserts uh, in place in all the places that they need and they'll be ready to go. The other prep work that I'm going to do is these linear rails. <laughs> these seem so small after having built the, the V2.4, uh, um, which is the biggest, you know, Voron printer. Anyway, these, these tiny linear rails, um, they come usually 
kind of clean, but sometimes there's a little bit of grime and packing grease and stuff like that on them. And so they recommend, again in the instructions, if you're following the instructions, that you clean these with isopropyl alcohol and then uh, grease them by adding some additional lubricant into the carriage there. And so I'm again going to do that off camera so that these will be ready to go the next time that we um, that you see this these on video. And then these are our extrusions, by the way. Um, so this is a little sneak peek at the color scheme that we're going to be using. It's mostly gray um, with the black extrusions and other black hardware, and then some touches of white and this nice dark red that I found um, that I printed these parts in. So I'm going to do all of that prep work and have everything kind of uh, inventoried and separated out into each individual step that we're going to need to do just to streamline the build process once we actually come back and sit here at the desk and start putting things together. Again, that's probably extra work and maybe unnecessary, um, but I would recommend if this is your first time building one of these kits that you do go through the instructions in a pretty good level of detail and make sure you understand everything before you just go and start putting things together. Just save you a lot of headache uh, in the future if you're, you know, if you're nice and prepared. So I'm gonna go and get prepared um, do all of that prep work that I just mentioned, and then we'll come back in the next video in this series and start putting together, I assume it's gonna be the frame and the and the Z-axis and the holder for the print bed. Um, I think that's probably the first step here in the manual. So we'll do that next time. Um, I'm gonna go get prepped and ready to go, and I will see you then.